I'm alive, babe. Hey y'all. Hey y'all. Hey y'all. They just don't understand how persistent I am. Come on back in here. Come on back in here. What's up, sexy people? Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Y'all see it. Y'all see it. This is my third attempt. This is my third attempt attempt and looks like I might be up here tonight doing attempt after attempt after mother flipping attempt um I hope you guys come back especially on on YouTube and Facebook and Twitter and all those places um for some reason ecam live uh keeps stopping in the middle I don't know why I don't know why the platform is doing that but there are lots of other platforms out there that we can use to make sure that we're getting this to the people and you guys can always 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 see our content at worthtv.com i know it's choppy you guys because i have been literally my stream has been taken down or stopped i'm sorry um several times every time i talk about p valley but i'm about to get into it we're gonna let a couple more y'all come up in here we're gonna let a couple more y'all come up in here the uda the uda the uda the uda that is why it's so important for us to have ownership and our, us to have our own platforms. And I guess that there are certain key words. Um, I'm feeling like Kunta Kente. They'd be like, say Toby. You know what I'm saying? Like I say WRFTV, it feels like the equivalent of saying Kunta Kente. I speak up about what's going on in my life and what is going on in this horrible, horrible, horrible litigation that I'm in with stars and Lionsgate, Katori Hall and P Valley. And all of a sudden, everything just starts falling apart now. Call me paranoid. Yeah, but y'all was here to see it. So this is the third video. This third time is the charm. This is the third video. I will not. I don't feel no waste time. Baby, we going to do what we got to do. And why y'all coming up in here? <sighs> why y'all coming up in here? I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you for coming back. I want to say thank you for listening to my truth. Like Suge Knight said, we have got to speak the truth. Um, I don't know why, uh, this is occurring the way that it is. Um, but I keep getting knocked off of my feed and that is bananas. This is the third time and the irony of it all. Thank you, YouTube for being a platform that allows a lot of people to get out there and speak the truth even if it's something that powerful people with lots and lots of influence don't want you to do. So um, it applies. It's, it's so easy for so many people to do it. But for some strange reason, I keep having these problems with my lives. But y'all are getting the message. I know you are. I know y'all see it. And sometimes you have to see it in order to believe it. So let me get back to it. Try to hurry up and get this out. And not be long-winded. Maybe that's the, the internet's way of saying, girl, just get to it. Um, Wow. Hey, sister. Hey, sister. I see you. 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 Wow. I'm just still recovering from the audacity. So if you watch the live video, it's a little disjointed. I'm going to try to maybe put them all together and make it one video. Or you guys can watch one after the other. But this whole entire conversation was inspired by the fact that Katori Hall is now producing a docu-series based on, um, inspired by the docu-series P-Valley. And what I was trying to tell y'all is when I sat down with the CEO of Lionsgate, I pitched him the docu-series documenting Soul Kittens Cabaret. I pitched him everything that was in the deck and the deck included. And I should have put a copy of the deck. I may make a, a copy of the deck available on YouTube and on Worth TV and some of our other platforms as well, since it appears that, you know, 
we're having difficulty staying on the live. I talked for two and a half hours the other day and I wasn't talking about them. And it was just no problem at all. And now when I start speaking truth to power, I got to do three separate lives because each one of them keeps getting bumped off. I'm going to let more of y'all come in here. The, part, the reason why I'm not going right into it now is I'm going to let a little a few more of you guys come in here. And um, then I'm going to get into the juicy, juicy. Like, I'm conflicted. I'm like, do I give it to y'all now? But let me give it to y'all now. So, yes, I sat with the CEO of Lionsgate. And in addition to pitching him, you know, Sokin's Cabaret as a scripted drama series called Curtains. And I left the script for that with him. I left two scripts because I was told by my attorney who referred me to the meeting that I was going to be meeting with two guys named John. Um, and one of them wasn't available and, and, and wasn't there. So the other John was there. So I left two copies of everything because I was going to see two people that day. Only one was there. In those two copies of everything that I left, it included a docu-series documenting the journey of Soul Kittens Cabaret. It also included the fact that I wanted to have Soul Kittens Cabaret live show in Vegas. It also included the fact that the musical stage play I felt was with the right development and the right um, financial backing was fit for Broadway and other larger uh, platforms and stages. Um, so all of these things that Katori, these original authentic ideas that Katori had Somehow or another, we've all we've had the same ideas. We've we it's the same thing, right? And what I'm curious to know is while you're talking about Nico going around visiting all of these various places and you know the Delta and all this other stuff, there is a clip, and I don't even want to pay it. But at this point, I don't even want to play the clips. I think what I'm going to do is after I'm going to do a fourth video, and I'm just going to run these receipts because if I start playing those then I know this is gonna bump out again but Nico said out of his own mouth that the play was nothing the play that they did in Minneapolis which is the only presentation that they did of Soul Kittens Cabaret I mean of, of, of yeah of P Valley was nothing like what you're seeing now it was vastly different is what he said and she said that the characters Tata Burlesque ooh, I'm even confused Uncle Clifford was inspired by her mother her father and her uncle Clifford. He also said that Katori documented everything when he sat down with Les Dog on her podcast. And I was going to show that to y'all, but I'm not going to show it to you because it looks like folks are looking. I, I know they watch them a lot. It already they they send all my stuff to the judge, and you know they they threaten me with like all sorts of like and all sorts of things. You know, it's just par for the course. But he said that she documented everything. He said in the in the, in the podcast with Les that Katori had documentation of everything. So if Katori has documentation of everything, are we going to see that in this documentary? Because that would solve all the problems. If you're going to do a documentary about the making of P Valley, what would solve all the problems in the litigation is just to show all of your receipts from all the things that you said that you did to put this show together the same way that I can show all of my receipts from all of the things that I said that I did in putting the show together. See, you don't have to question whether or not I put this thing together from 2004 because I have all the receipts that show and support that I did. You don't have to question whether or not I have a copyright because I have a federal copyright that I filed in uh, the Writers Guild in 24, 2004 and then again in 2006. See, I have I, I literally have a paper trail and a documented you know, journey from Soul Kittens Cabaret almost 20 years ago. So if we're doing a docu-series or a documentary, Katori Hall asked you this, sis, are we going to see the beginnings of P-Valley? Are we going to see, like you could see very easily with me, you actually putting this thing together as a stage play? Are we going to see what it was like when you journeyed to LA to go and meet with the CEO that you were swapping each story ideas with? And I'm not telling you something that is in a deposition that is sealed. That is something that you said publicly that I don't want to play right now because it's going to get probably have my life get shut down again. I'm not doing anything disrespectful. I'm speaking my truth. I'm not using any licensed content. It's all fair use. But somehow or another, 
me trying to share my truth with my audience gets interrupted. I don't know why it is so hard for people who are telling the truth in this industry and speaking against power to have an honest, real shot at telling the truth. It's so evil and toxic and dark and terrible that you already got billions of dollars. You've already got, I mean, like the way that these people bully and try to prevent and work to prevent and limit your reach, right? We had hundreds of people versus 15 or 20 people. And when you see that it's hot and people are talking about it and people are sharing it, y'all, please share this live. Please tell people to go to Worth TV YouTube channel. Please tell people to go to WorthTV.com. Please tell people to go to places where they can see the truth, where they can hear the truth, where they have an opportunity to see what really had happened was. They are preventing me from, I can't go to trial. I can't talk about it on my YouTube, my Facebook, my LinkedIn, my Twitter, my Instagram. I can't share my truth on my platforms and I can't go to court. WTF, hard F. My family can suffer for years and years and years. And my First Amendment rights, my ability to petition, my ability to share what I am going through, my ability to say to other young creators that you have to protect yourselves. I'm not on here cussing. I'm on here singing. I'm on here having a good time. I'm on here speaking my truth. And my life just keeps getting cut shut, shut down. My reach just keeps getting limited. It is just what world do we live in? Y'all have the power. Y'all allow them to do this to black women. All of you out there that keep a man cornering, ask Katori, does she own P-Valley? I said it. Oh, I know the live going to drop out now. So I'm just going to pop, 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 pop. Do you own it, sus? Do you have ownership of what you pitched to them? I'm just asking for a friend in the middle of a litigation. And yeah, I'm tired because I've been staying up all night editing and doing the jobs of 10 people. Why? Because our little independent company is run by a small but mighty crew of people who believe in the work that we're doing. Why? Because the founder is in a multi-billion dollar litigation with a company that doesn't even want to allow me to speak my truth. And I'm not waiting for permission from anybody to do it anymore. It is what it is. We are seeds. Bury us if you want to. We grow and we reach people. And we reach people lifetime after lifetime and eventually somebody with some backbone eventually somebody who doesn't want to sit up and talk about how black women speaking up for themselves is just clout chasing somebody with some real power and influence and that's why I talked about Suge at the beginning of this podcast Now, y'all going to make this motherfucker five hours long and five different parts talking specifically about this situation because you keep dropping or my life keeps miraculously dropping. And that's the universe. That's God. You don't have that power. Maybe maybe some evil part of somebody is sinister enough to have the ability to drop my life out and limit my reach and not have my lives go where they need to go. I got a live. I got a video reel with a million views and I got one with three literally right up under it and guess what we talking about in the one with three guess what we're talking about in the one with three everybody's not crazy everybody is not out here just making stuff up about the corporate bullies that don't want to hear us speak our truths that want us to just grind our teeth until they turn into dust and they are relying on y'all they are relying on our people for this thing to work They're relying on you to agree to destroy one another, for us to agree to destroy one another. This lady is doing a docu-series about P-Valley, riding around neighborhoods, talking about food and strip clubs and shit like that. Do a docu-series. 
actually documenting how you created it. You said you talked to all of these strippers. Nico said you documented all of it. If you're doing a doc, he said that in an interview with Les, dog, and them. He said Katori documented all of it. She got it all. She, she documented it. That's what we want to see. That's what I want to see. Not somebody riding around getting meals and stuff. I want to see so that my family doesn't have to leverage our home. So that I can spend more time with my sister with brain cancer. So that I can spend more time with my grandson. So I can stop paying lawyers millions of dollars and having your lawyers try to bully me out of a million dollars. So I can stop and, and move on. Show me the receipts, sis, in my Whitney Houston motherfucking voice. Show me the receipts. Don't go have nobody riding around testing food and shit if you're in the middle of a major litigation yeah I'm mad as hell I'm mad as hell because it shouldn't be this hard it should not be this hard for black women to have a shot at a jury it shouldn't be this hard who has billions of dollars to keep going around in circles with you motherfuckers yeah that's the clip they gonna show everybody I'm mad as hell and I'm infuriated because our people are tools of the incompetent. Our people allow black women to get beat up on by corporations. Call every name in the book. My family has suffered for years. And we spent million, so much money and we're being sued for so, and did not even get granted the right to go before a jury. I don't care how much you don't like me. That ain't right nowhere with nobody. And now to add insult to injury, next week they'll be on Tamron Hall promoting the fact that he's riding around doing a documentary and ain't showing not one receipt one thing that we really want to see, one thing that I want to see. And the reason this is so important for me to say, and yeah, they're going to go like they have with everything else. If you go look at Pacer, you're going to see all kinds of YouTube videos, all kinds of Instagram videos, all kinds of Twitter videos. They're going to say I was out here trying to hurt them or hurt somebody or do something, you know, talking, whatever, whatever. And I'm sharing my truth. I'm exercising my First Amendment right. And they're going to take every clip of me sucking my teeth and rolling my neck. We got to sit up straight with the back straight. Fonnie Willis is going through hell because she's trying to help. Okay, let me stop. They really going to, they really, yeah, let me stop. And that's a shame. It's a sin and a shame. It's a sin and a shame. It's a sin and a shame that you can dance around and they'll show it to 500 million people. You can sell liquor and alcohol and all of the stuff that none of us need in our community because it's just too much in that motherfucker already. We could show people literally having sexual acts. But the minute a black woman who cares more about the black community than anybody up in this mother, it, the minute one of us has to say, hey, listen, this happened to me. This isn't right. This should not be happening. We clout chasing. We crazy. Well, I would rather be crazy for telling the truth. I'd rather be called crazy for being one of the few people brave enough to speak up because my grandson's livelihood depends on it. Because our kids' livelihood depends on us being strong enough and brave enough to have some motherfucking backbone and standing up. Then kowtow and lie and be called great because of a lie. And if it's not a lie, then prove it in my mother and brownstone voice. Recenter. I don't want to rain on this parade, but I'm starting to question the love that was made. I'm not looking. Come on, y'all. Let's lighten it up. See if we can stay on here just for a few more minutes. It's a shame that we got to step, fetch, perform, be hypersexual, be angry, 
be toxic in order to reach our people. It is a crime that people leverage these platforms and shut those of us who are speaking truth down on these platforms. And it's really foul that when we start talking about building, like we're building at WIRFTV.com, y'all get so tired of hearing about worth and fight for worth and the, 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 the mission to change the narrative. Y'all get so tired of that. But you don't understand how important this is for our kids, for our babies, for my grandson. You guys, I was on a call today. And hallelujah, because there's some folks in my corner and I'm so grateful for it. But I was on a call today and we were talking about the fact that If you're black, what do you share with your children about how great we are when everything that is keeping their attention and their focus is rooted in how horrible we are? And by the time most of y'all grow up, to realize just how foul the shit really is. You're either too tired or you don't have the following or the fan base anymore to really make a difference. I haven't asked y'all for $2. Well, yes, I did. I put the cash app up. Matter of fact, let me put that up one more time right now. If you like the comp, the information that you're getting here on nights with Nikki, and you want to support an organization and a platform for us, by us, because, you know, we be getting shut off in the middle of our lives and things. Fight for Worth is the cash app. We are building something great and we need each and every one of you to do it. Um, I could get on here and be messy and I could get on here and really captivate y'all's and, and keep y'all's attention by doing some really toxic, awful stuff. Right. I could get the numbers. That ain't shit talking about somebody else's problems, joking on people, jonesing on people, looking cute, dressing cute, going to get some, you know, badass clothes and some shoes and having people, hey, yeah, girl, yeah, man, man. I could do all of that, but I choose not to use my platform to brag to my community that's so broken about how great I am and all the wonderful, amazing, fantabulous clothes and things that I have. There's not, there's not there's anything wrong with that. I think it's great that influencers are able to make money Shout out again to the, you know, black owned women owned businesses that I plugged earlier tonight. Um, But we got to do something different, guys. We got to stop allowing these culturally incompetent people to continue to dictate our narratives. It's getting worse. The people who care are getting older. I'm tired. Truth be told, I wake up some days and I'll be like, babe, F it. They ain't listening no way. Let's just go over there. And the only thing that stops me from actually going through with it is the fact that I know that people who have done things like what these people have done to me, that they want me to stop, that they want me to quit. To all you Nikki Gilbert Daniels haters, first of all, kiss my ass. I don't care. I only care about the people who are positive and love me and support me and are there for me. But to all you people who don't like me because one other culturally incompetent white male lens painted out a picture. And that's what happened. I was there. That's what happened. That's what me and Monifa talked about. That is exactly what happened. People realize that I wasn't just going for the okie doke early on. People realize that I wasn't just a black woman. You could put a quarter in my back to make me perform for your mother and disrespect my sisters because I cuss and because I talk loud sometimes but most of the time I actually don't which is crazy except when I'm excited to see somebody excited about something but I digress because I'm not running around here trying to be all up in the videos dancing all the time shout out to Suge Knight who seems to be one of the only men left in the industry unfortunately he's buying bars for now God willing he'll catch a break But because I'm out here really doing the work 
and really not taking the bag to disrespect my people. I'm punished. I'm called difficult. I'm called a problem. And I don't care. Listen, for real, in real life, keep commenting. Call me every name in the book. Just make sure you do it on a YouTube ad that's up on a YouTube uh, uh, or, or Worth Media or wherever. Well, you can't do it on Worth Media. So if you're going to make a foul comment, do it on one of the monetized videos, please. Because those that, that's where the comments count. All your comments and your negative comments mean to me is monetization. I'm going to say it one more time for the deaf people in the back who don't understand. All your negative, toxic commentary means for me is monetization so that I can take and flip and turn those resources into something that positively impacts our community. It's a shame that I have been drugged through the mud in this P-Valley case. It's a shame that I went and pitched to this CEO, the docu-series that now, oh, this authentic idea that Katori's come up with. Sis, what original idea have you ever come up with? Tina Turner's life story is not original for you. That's her original story. That's her life. Anybody could write that who loves Tina Turner. The Pulitzer Prize winning, winning mountaintop that you wrote was a reimagining of one of the greatest American heroes, black American heroes, American heroes we've ever known. That wasn't authentic. The hot wing king you did. Baby, that wasn't authentic either. You got that from your brother and his relationships. And I truly believe that you got P Valley from me. Why? Because you said yourself that you were pitching story ideas with the CEO of the network, which happens to be the same network I went and pitched my stuff to. And you're lucky enough for now to have a company that continues to funnel resources for you to continue to pretend like you actually came up with that. But I don't care what nobody say. I know where that came from. And I'm not going to get robbed twice. And yeah, y'all, I said the word robbed, which is probably going to result in a letter because, you know, you just got to watch how you talk. And it's really it just reminds me of like slavery. I was listening to Britney Spears interview and she was saying that her attorneys were telling her, don't talk about it. You can't talk about it. You can't talk about it. Don't say nothing. Don't say nothing. Don't say nothing. And true. I understand. Probably shouldn't. I wouldn't advise anybody to do it. I'm different. But she regrets that she didn't because it just got worse. And it's so difficult to come up with excuse year after year after year for my family, my grandson, my sisters, my, you know, as to why I have to work 24 hours a day. Y'all see these bags. Y'all see that. That's, you know, I got on, I know eyes matter and a little, um, another product that y'all have to go to. I know skincare to, to see, but the bags is bagging. The bags are bagging because I'm staying up burning the midnight oil to the wee hours of the morning, rebuilding a company that was pretty much destroyed by a multi-billion dollar corporation simply because I stood up to them. We got 57 comparisons, an hour long video. I sat down and I talked to you about all these characters. I sat down and talked to you about the same docu-series idea. And to watch someone year after year after year, I've been watching this, you guys, since 2020. That's why I'm mad as hell. That's why I'm angry. We are fighting to save everything we own. And then you really ain't supposed to even say that because, oh, don't let the people think that you ain't got enough money to pay billions of dollars in legal fees after a pandemic. That's the power. And you know where they got the money to do this to me, y'all? Lean in. They got the money to do this to me from every black person that subscribed to stars. Period. That's how I look at it. 
all black people, any people, but in particular, people of color who sit back and talk about, oh, that's terrible what happened to Taraji. Oh, that's terrible what happened to Terrence Howard. We all geeked up running around. It's hard out here for a pimp when you're trying to get the money for the rent. Come on, y'all. All the Cadillac and gas money spent. We got a whole lot of bitches jumping ship. Hey, they can have us at the Oscars singing that sugar honey iced tea. And then black people didn't make no money for that. And it's always there. Always there. And it's really sad that we look back on it and we think we see people winning. And we think we see people really doing it until we discover that they're not. That it's a sham. That it's vapor. That it's not real. How many more Whitney Houston's we need to have? How many more princes we need to have? How many more Michael Jacksons we need to have? How many Bob Marleys we need to have? Before black people realize we're being used as tools of the incompetent. I'm very clear. And that's the thing that's probably most hurtful for me. My people not understanding the sword I'm laying on for them. My people not understanding how much easier it would be for me to just be, you know, to just acquiesce. To just, be, you know, go to the parties and dress. Who doesn't want to go to the parties and dress up and be cute? I know I don't get invited to shit because of my position on this industry. I know people ain't really trying to check for me on certain things. Because, oh, well, you know, she, you know, she said that about such a... And I don't want to be in no fake ass rooms anyway. I really don't. If you know me, you know. It's hard to get me out to go anywhere in a room full of people that I don't think are being authentic. But because I don't acquiesce, because I don't agree with things that I don't believe are right, because I speak up and I stand up for myself, because I was one of the people who learned from Tyler Perry Tyler has what he has because of ownership. Because he was able to, like he said in that Medea's Baby documentary. I mean, I keep saying Medea's Baby. I'm sorry, no disrespect. Maxine's Baby. Like he, like he kept saying in that, in that documentary, he was able to get it because he demanded ownership. Is that if that's the formula, why can't more of us participate in that? If that's the formula, why when I went to Stars and I pitched that to the CEO of the network and the play and the documentary and the venue in Vegas, when I pitched all those things with him, when I left all those things, I don't. The, I, I think I, I envision in my mind, you know, because I know the table, I left it on. You know what I'm saying? I said, oh, Tata's auntie for Tata. He said, oh, I love the name Tata. Like, I envision people looking at my materials and just extracting creative ideas that they can just put $100 million behind and have ownership of and own. I'm not going to play the video because I don't want them to stop my live feed again for the third, fourth time, third time. But the CEO of Star said himself in the video, he gave, we gave Pretoria Hall $100 million for P-Valley. Nobody's ever done that. We hope more people take and follow suit and blah, blah, blah. I know it like the back of my hand. And it is heartbreaking to think that it didn't even warrant or deserve or get the opportunity to go to court. And now I wake up or before I go to sleep in the wee hours of the morning, it's another kick in the face. And if you guys are on this live, you didn't see, you got to watch the other live to see that I actually have a documentary documenting the entire journey of Soul Kittens Cabaret. Every year. Do you have that, Katori? Nico said you did. Even though the people will never be able to see your deposition because you got very wealthy, powerful people around you that have been able to 
redact what you said under sworn oath. That is a very difficult position to be in. To watch someone benefit greatly from something you truly believe came from you, not because you just pulling something out of your hat, but because the company that is producing it, you left all of your materials with, which included the docu-series, which included the drama series. And the thing is, they know that our people ain't gonna do nothing but claim I'm clout chasing. They don't send the bots out to say horrible, god-awful things about me and my family and all that other shit. I have to mentally prepare my grandson and all my nieces and nephews for, listen, y'all going to look out there in these internet streets. Many years from now, you're going to see a lot of things about me, but what they will never be able to call me is a liar, a thief, or a coward. No matter how hard they try to pin anything close to it on me. They know it's tr- not true. Y'all know it's not true. And I damn sure know it's not true if nobody else does. And the people closest to me who love me know that. But they try to shut you down by destroying your character and publicly flogging you. Instead of treating you like a human being who deserves a fair trial. I'm clear. There's nothing I can do but wait for the appeals court to make a decision in my case. And with the way these courts have been leaning, honey, they have been thankfully giving creatives as recently as last month. Like I said, there was another creator who had a side by side comparison video and we had the same judge and the appeals court. Thank God gave this person a shot and he settled his case and it's done. And I'm just praying to God that they give me the same shot. But if they don't, all I have is my platform to tell my truth. All I have is these social media platforms that limit my reach because they don't want everybody to know my truth. Or maybe somebody knows somebody on the board. I mean, you know, people know people. I'm not saying that's what's happening. I'm just saying everybody knows somebody. I know people shit. I don't have them to do stuff like, You know, I don't have them do things that limit people's reach and whatnot because I'm not afraid to sit across from somebody and talk openly and honestly about what happened. I'm brave enough to do that. And I'm not I'm not going to ask the court to redact my sworn oath and testimony because I think the public should see that. I think that's why the court system was established for us. So all the people out there reading the Puffy case and reading to this case and reading to that case, if you want to be proactive, all the talk show hosts that got friends over here and sponsorship over there and relationships over there, if you're really a black person who cares about the black community, if you're really a, a or, or not even a black person, if you're anybody who cares about people having a fair, equitable opportunity in this world, if you care about us being able to really change and positively impact our community and our people, you will read my case. You will read my case. You will read my expert's report. You will share my case far and wide. Because if my case is not a case that deserves to go before a trial and a jury. I don't think too many other people are going to come with evidence and facts as direct and undisputable and full of merit as my case against P-Valley, Lionsgate, Stars, and Katori Hall. They got all of these lawyers. And I got a bunch of them, too. And I thank God for them. And they will probably not be happy about my life. They probably, when these lives be shutting down, they probably like, whoosh, good. Matter of fact, is that my lawyer's doing that? Anyway, no. Um, I'm hot, so I'm about to stop. But it's hard, guys. It's very difficult. It is very difficult. And it's not difficult because I want to quit. Because I don't. And I'm not going to. It is what it is. I'm laying on the sword. It is what it is. I don't want this to be, you know, the the way my legacy is is is. Well, I don't really actually. I do actually. It it is what it is. 
Um, but I want people to just read the case. I want y'all to look at the comparisons. I want you to use your good judgment. Because while the judge said that no reasonable juror would look at this and see any comparisons, it is important now for the public to know what that is. Before it was like, oh, it's not important because the public ain't going to decide my case. Y'all, chances are, I ain't even going to hold y'all up. Chances are, whew, the way the way I'm feeling about, you know, how I've been abused through this process and bullied through this process, it's getting harder and harder for me to just, I don't have no more teeth to grind. I don't. Well, I do, but y'all get the point. I'm tired. And not tired like I'm going to quit. Tired like, what the hell? Who cares if people think I'm crazy for telling the truth? Who cares if people feel like I got my foot on necks 24 hours a day, seven days a week? Who cares if people who haven't bothered to read my case don't believe my merits and my facts. What I care about is the people in our community who understand how important changing what is happening in this entertainment industry is. And the reason why changing what is happening in the entertainment industry is so important for so many black people is because sports and entertainment. Number one, creates the most black billionaires and the most black wealth. But also they reach the most black people. Whether they help wealthier, whatever. We get our information from our media personalities. Look at, look at, look at Club Shay Shay. Look at, you know, Risa Tisa. And I tried to reach out to her on TikTok. I don't even do TikTok. And I tried to low key be like, sis, you don't even know me from Adam, but please don't sell your stuff. Make sure you trademark your name. Make sure you whatever, whatever. And she ain't gonna pay no attention to me because I'm not CAA or one of those acronyms. But it's so important for us to understand that if I don't get a chance to go to court, I don't believe winning a copyright infringement litigation against a major multi-billion dollar company as a black woman. Do y'all understand winning this case? I will make history, her story and everybody else's story. Deadline.com has not really ever mentioned anything about this case with all this merit. I'm disappointed and, and y'all know I am because I say it all the time. Tamron Hall. She's a sister and a journalist who understands the machine and how it operates. Everybody does nothing but sing these people's praises. But y'all will rip someone to shreds. Like with Lizzo, like with Puff. All it got to be is a claim filed. Like we ain't heard nothing else about the Lizzo lawsuit. And that's not to say that these people who filed the lawsuit didn't have merit. What it is to say, however is that you will judge somebody based on a complaint filed. And here I am, a black woman who has been in a litigation since 2020 on the verge of losing everything but my pride, my faith, my family, thank God my health and wellness. Who knows the way these motherfuckers be praying on me. But anyway, um, and it's not even worth, you know, one of these major outlets sharing it. And it is because I'm a black woman. I don't care what nobody tell you. Cause if my name was Minnie driver or Julia Roberts or Ike Turner or whatever, this shit would be everywhere. But because I'm a black woman from Detroit who has been painted out to be a loud mouth, disrespectful, mean girl from R and B divas. I am, my case isn't important. It's not worth reviewing. At some point, this case 
is going to be one that people look back on and say, wow. Right. It's interesting because I saw Rockman Dunbar just to give you guys another reality of being a black woman in entertainment and how people just don't give a sugar, honey, iced tea about us, no matter what Rockman um, posted that he had um, been given the opportunity to go to go to trial so that, you know, he can actually get with the people about being fired from during the pandemic and everybody celebrating him, which as they should, they should be celebrating this brother. But what's really crazy is that when I went to court for the only hearing, the only time I've been in a courtroom when I went to LA and the hearing actually got postponed and you read the hearing transcript. And I was really hopeful when I read that hearing transcript, it's like the hearing transcript and what was actually ordered. It was crazy, but the sister from girls who run the world, beautiful, beautiful sister. I believe her. I'm not going to call her out. Y'all look her up, but she, her attorneys were there. She wasn't there, but her attorneys were there. And you know, you hear other people's cases while you're waiting for yours. And we have the same judge, right? And her case was the same thing. She was suing stars and Lionsgate, another black woman. She was suing them because they fired her because she didn't take the COVID vaccine. And I remember thinking while I was sitting in court, go sus, yes, get their asses. I hope they, but he did the same thing with her that he did with me, which is dismissed in all summary judgment. She got dismissed a few weeks before I did. And I saw that and I got nervous about it. And I was like, oh, this sister got dismissed. But what's crazy is that Rockman is going to trial. He's being given the opportunity to fight for his rights. He's being given the opportunity to go before a jury and share it. But this sister from girls from who run the world, her case got dismissed. I hope she filed an appeal. God knows I hope she filed an appeal because this brother just got the right to go forward. But for black women, it just is so different for us. Look at Fonnie Willis. And it's crazy because black women are the number one consumers of the content. We're the ones who make it hot. We're the ones that make stars. You know, P Valley is one of the highest rated shows on stars, period. It's hugely successful. And every single day I have to wake up and hope that this judge does not grant them that million dollars they're trying to sue me for. How can I with a straight face tell anybody to stand up for him or herself when my family has lost and is working to salvage everything we have because we made the decision to stand up for ourselves and we had a great case. How does Katori Hall as a black woman, like I want to go to trial, sis. Like she should be like, no, I want to see Nikki in court. I want to see her because this, I created this. And then you get the opportunity. And this is why I'm so mad. And I'm mad. Like I ain't going to be pulled up and politically correct about it. I'm mad AF. And I'm mad AF because when I saw that she was doing a docuseries, when I saw the headline, P-Valley docuseries coming, I'm like, yes, good. I'll finally get a chance to see where the shit came from. I finally get a chance to see this lady's receipts. She's finally going to show the world the receipts. She going to show us how she was interviewing the strippers. She going to show us how her and Nico, we, we haven't even seen, there's not one video of this one performance they had in Minneapolis of P-Valley online. We, we searched far and wide. There's not one video of it. Not one. I'm thinking we going to see all of that. And what are we getting? We're getting Uncle Clifford, who's from Detroit, my hometown, riding around, exploring the delicacies and the strip clubs and whatever of the Delta. You're in the middle of a major litigation. The redemption is, here go my receipts. Especially when today somebody sent me a video of a I don't know if she's still a current stripper or a former stripper. 
who said the whole Mercedes last dance idea and all that stuff came from her. Y'all gave her a role on the show. So I assume she's not going to sue you. And she got some friends at work on the show. So I assume she's not going to sue you. But she said that was her story. Just today I saw it. So the only part that I would say is not. And let me think about this. Well, no, this is the truth. The only part we're not that they were burlesque dancers and they were burlesque dancers, which are strippers. Because. We didn't just be totally honest with y'all. I thought the stripper was just a little extra, extra icing on the cake. And burlesque seemed more appropriate for musicals and theater and stuff like that. But when we got to the drama series, it was going to be just like the adaptation that P Valley was dark and interesting you guys one day I'll do a table read with 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 curtains of curtains and it's even more like P Valley than Soul Kittens Cabaret and they had that too because remember I left two copies of the pilot and the deck and if you don't know what a deck or a powerpoint is it lays out all of the various ancillary opportunities for the the property and one of the ancillary opportunities for Sokin's Cabaret was the docu-series. So now Katori's doing a docu-series after waiting all these years after a writer's strike, which I had heard that the script was written before the script strike, but there it is. After all these years, you're now going to give the P-Valley fans a docu-series, not a docu-series about the origins of P-Valley, but a docu-series that somehow will justify I don't know what it's going to justify. I don't know what it's going to do. But it just made me furious because I was like, oh, I can stop spending all this money. You know, I can stop stressing myself out about whatever this girl about to show the receipts. I said, docu-series first. I was like, no way. And then I'm like, oh, well, at least this means we're going to see the receipts. And no, we're not seeing no receipts. We ain't seeing that one. Or I don't know. Let me, let me, let me, well, based on the description in deadline.com, we're not going to see no receipts. Um, so it pissed me off and I, I felt like it was important to share that and why I felt like it was important to share it because I did, because if the only thing I can do is go tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere, go tell it on the mountain. My foot is on your neck. I said, no, I'm just playing. But no, I'm serious, dead ass. I'm not playing. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired and I'm just getting started. Because like I said before, and I'm going to be done with this, if my baby sister can be brave enough to fight stage four brain cancer, and walk forward every day and face that horrible, god-awful diagnosis and chemo and all the shit that comes along with it. I can use the strength that I have, the knowledge that I have, the fearlessness that I have, the commitment that I have to make sure that my story, from my lips to your ears, is shared far and wide. So if y'all want to help me, you could take a picture of this cash app. And a <laughs> take a picture. Take a picture right now. Take a picture. Right? Especially if y'all find out Monday because of this live that I got to pay these people a million dollars. I'm really extra going to need it. But in all seriousness, if you want to help me, share my story. Share my story. I've committed a lot of my life to helping other women and girls in the community. I have leveraged every resource I have made available to me. And I'm still out here on these stages singing and dancing and I pull out a magic trick every now and then if I have to. And all I'm asking y'all to do is to share it. And the reason why it's important for you to share it is because again, if God, and that is what this is about, gives me the opportunity 
to go to trial. Just the fact that I went to trial, whether I win or lose, just the fact that I had a case that went to trial that challenged a m- several multi-billion dollar companies will hopefully be a deterrent for future creative for fu- for corporations to do this to to other creatives. I mean, for God's sakes, they threw out my expert report, y'all, and they didn't even call it expert. There was nothing to compare the report that the expert we hired, and each person has to hire an expert, has the right to hire an expert. We hired an expert because we were like, listen, we want to make sure we cover all the bases. That was $75,000 I could have kept instead of just having it thrown in the trash like it meant nothing. And y'all wonder why I'm always on these blogs underneath the comments speaking my truth. Because this shit is real for me. Like I said to Monifa. It is real for my family and it's real for y'all. Because God forbid one of your children or somebody that you love and somebody that you know decides that they want to pursue a career in the entertainment industry. It is on fire. It's on fire. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. Burning up. The business is burning up. Come on, y'all. Burning up. The business is burning up. This business is on fire. It's on fire. Yeah. Come on. Put a couple coins in the jukebox. Worth median. <laughs> I had to say it. I had to say it because I am like a jukebox. All right. Um, so I guess we have gotten to two hours by now. Um I hate that it was disjointed. No, I don't. Maybe there's just more advertising I can get from set various videos. You guys, I'm going to post um, this this other video that I was going to play on my live. I don't want to play it on my live because I don't want them to, to disrupt the live. But I'm tired. I have been respectful. I have been kind. I did not want this to become a big deal at all. I did not want to be suing another black woman in public. I'm coming back. But I was left with no other option. Because my family's livelihood and everything that we have depends on the opportunity to have a trial. So pray for me. Pray for me in church in the morning. Go see Kiki Wyatt. Go to her church. I know this was one of those heavier lives. Um, But I needed to say this. I needed to share this because I've been carrying this burden. And every time I wake up and I see that Katori Hall is doing yet another thing that I've already done, it just burns me the fuck up. And I know I probably won't be able to really monetize this video as much because I got a lot of F-bombs in it. But I want you guys to get the message and understand the passion. And in the future, when a black woman speaks up and speaks truth 